Hello, hello, good morning, happy Monday. I hope you all had a great weekend um, and you're off to a great start today for this Monday morning or afternoon, wherever you may be. Um, it is 10 o'clock here where I am, Mountain Standard Time, I'm in Arizona. And um, I have about 30 minutes today to share this training with you. And I will be looking off of my notes because if I don't do that, I'm gonna go off on a tangent and I just, you know, could be here for hours talking to you. So um, wanted to quickly introduce myself. So my name is Jennifer. I am an online business coach for virtual assistants. I am also a stay-at-home mom with our twin girls who just turned four last week. Craziness. They just started preschool this year too. Um, so lots of excitement around our house. And I'm also the creator of Virtual Assistant Startup Academy. And I have been in this online space now since 2019 when I started my first online business as a virtual assistant. And then last year I is when I pivoted into coaching. So today I will be sharing my top three techniques in order to help you achieve a healthy work-life balance. So here's a quick rundown of the three techniques that I will be sharing with you today. So number one is how to set goals and really pave the path in order to achieving them. Number two is how to stay organized and productive with a time management technique called time blocking. And then the third is how to set boundaries, how to set those healthy boundaries. So this is the exact process that I follow and the same one that I teach to all of my clients and students. So if you can today, please go ahead and grab a pen and paper and let's dive into it. All right, so first let's talk about how to set goals. So I wanted to share with you one of my favorite quotes in regards to goal setting from Steve Garvey. You have to set goals that are almost out of reach. If you set a goal that is attainable without much work or thought, you are stuck with something below your true talent and potential. How powerful and motivating is that? I don't know about you, but just listening to that, seeing that, reading that gives me so much motivation to just push myself harder and harder, right? Set those goals higher and higher for myself. So I'll be honest, you know, prior to starting my own business, I was not a big goal setting person. Okay, full honesty. Um, I had things that I wanted to achieve at some point, but no time frames or anything really mapped out. And what I've learned along the way is that I was basically dreaming or wishing for those things to happen in my life. And things that are very within reach for us we may never accomplish that if we don't set the goal and have an action plan to achieve it, right? So if I maybe just described you and you're in that same situation as well, you don't really set goals, you just kind of go with what happens, right? Um, how do you know what you're working towards each day? Right. So I strongly encourage you to set long term and short term goals for yourself personally and in your business as well. So once you set a goal, think about everything that you will have to do in order to achieve that. So it's a if it's a large long term goal, what do you have to do in order to get there? Right. So break that down into your smaller goals and set some deadlines. Start putting in the work on a daily basis and you will be shocked, seriously, at how much you can actually achieve. So here's just a quick example that I want to go over with you. So let's say six months from now, I want to be completely booked out in my business with client work. Maybe that's one of your goals, okay? So let's break this down and think about all of the steps that will have to happen in order to achieve that. So market research, right? Finding out your, your audience, what they need, how you can best serve them, showing up consistently wherever you market your business on social media platforms, uh, building your network and nurturing those leads. Uh, literally, obviously, the list goes on and on with that. But it is really, really important 
to have all of the pieces written down so that you know all of the things that you have to do in order to achieve that main goal, that long-term goal. So I personally recommend using a day planner along with a physical notebook, okay? So I find that when I physically write things down, I am way more on top of things versus me putting things in a to-do list on my phone or on my computer. I mean, it's still, it does work for me, but it's not as productive as me writing things out and physically crossing them off or checking them off, right? Um, so find, try either, try them both, see what works best for you. I'm not saying do one or the other. Just find what works best for you and use that and go with it, okay? So for all of my planning goals and time blocking my schedule, I use the Future Is Yours Priority Planner, which is right here, um, from Rachel Hollis. It looks like this. I think it's like $20 or something like that on her website, but that, that book has like literally changed my life, the planner. <laughs> so I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I, yeah. It's, it's a game changer for sure. So it helps me stay super organized and I'm literally crossing things off my list left and right. So, okay, that was how to set goals. So next, let's hop into time blocking, time management. So how to actually time block your schedule to be more intentional and productive with your time. So do you ever feel like you're so busy each and every single day? And then at the end of the day, you kind of sit down and you're like, wait a minute, like, what did I actually achieve, right? Like, I know I was busy, but I don't feel like I got anything done or like nothing actually got checked off my list, right? I did a whole bunch of things, but nothing actually got completed. So if you feel like this, it's probably because you haven't set clear goals or time frames for the different things that you're working on every day. So let's talk about how to be more productive with your time. All right, so time blocking. What, what does that even mean, right? So time blocking is a method of time management used to divide your day into blocks of time. So each block is dedicated to accomplish a specific task. Prioritize your tasks in advance so you know what is coming up you know, for the week ahead. And then review your schedule at the end of each day and see if there was anything that you weren't able to finish along with new tasks that are coming in and add that to the rest of the week accordingly. So I recommend spending a few minutes at the end of each day, you know, planning out your schedule for the next day. And this is when it's, you know, uninterrupted time, no distractions, and it's just time for yourself that you can really focus on your schedule. So we just talked about how to set goals. So you should now have some to work towards both personal and professional. Next, let's talk about these goals and let's figure out how to schedule them so you can start achieving them. Pardon me. So like I said, the way to achieve a large goal is to set that set all of those smaller goals step by step to help you move forward to that end goal and get that crossed off your list. So using the same long-term goal from before, six months from now, I will be completely booked out in my business with client work. So again, what do you have to do to achieve that? So the market research, right? All of that, you know, how to best serve your clients, how to continue to serve them, showing up consistently, building your network, nurturing those leads. What do you have to do and how often do you have to do that in order to achieve the first goal that you have set for yourself? So beside each task leading up to achieving your long-term goal, write down whether it is something that needs to be done daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, et cetera, right? Like what's the time frame on how often this needs to occur? Now take everything from the list that you just created and start adding it to your day planner. So if you're a visual person, it would be best to have like a, a big desk calendar, if possible, in your space that you're in, where you can easily see 
all like everything all at once, right? A month at a glance. You can see everything that you're working on. Um, and then also using a, like a day planner where you can be more specific with everything in there in your schedule. So as I said earlier, I recommend the Future is Yours day planner for, or sorry, priority planner from Rachel Hollis or find something similar to that that starts at 5 or 6 a.m. and it has time slots until 9 or 10 p.m. at night. This allows you to easily plan out all of the hours of your day, including your own business development, client work, um, and then all the personal things that come along with managing your house as well. Now let's lay it all out and get your day scheduled. So if you don't have a day planner, that's totally okay. No big deal. But I do strongly recommend getting one. Um, and then for this, just follow along and write out your schedule for the rest of this week on a piece of paper or a few pieces of paper. <laughs> Um, so start with all of the routine things that you do each and every day, right? So example, first thing in the morning, you wake up, you have a coffee, work out, read the Bible, do your, um, devotional, you know, whatever it is that you do first thing in the morning, schedule that into your planner. So for example, an hour and a half from six to seven 30, work out and get ready for the day. Seven 30 to eight o'clock get breakfast ready and maybe get the kids up, whatever that day looks like for you, right? So continue on with your daily routine. And then once you're done, you will be able to see these little chunks of time that you have where you are free. And this free time can now be used for your own business development, client work, self-care, whatever it is that you need to use that time for, okay? So now that you have figured out your daily schedule, what are the top three goals that you want to achieve? Schedule these goals into your calendar, into your day accordingly, in order of importance. And then try to stick to your day planner as closely as possible. Now, I know this may be a little trial and error, um, not going to be perfect for sure as you first start this because you probably don't know how much time you're actually spending doing certain things. For example, mindlessly scrolling social, social media because guilty, I mean, it happens, right? Um, but things like that, like you just don't really know how long it's taking you to do things like that or how much time is getting sucked into things that aren't productive for you. So something else that I actually recommend is tracking your time using a free program like Toggle or something like that, T-O-G-G-L. That's a free um, time tracking software that you can just type into your um, Explorer, type Toggle, and there you go. You create an account and you can create little projects in there. Um, if you do have clients, you're keeping that for client work. You can add your clients and then it just keeps everything as a total so you know exactly what you've spent your time on. You can run reports, all that good stuff, okay? Um, so, whoops, sorry. Lost my spot. Um, doo -doo -doo. But anyways, yeah, so this will keep you on top of your schedule when completing client work and as well as seeing what you are spending your time on just doing different projects for yourself and for your own business. All right, so next we are into setting boundaries and I'm just going to take a quick little drink here because I tend to talk way too fast and, you know, <laughs> need to calm down a little bit. So I'm going to just grab a little drink. It's the joys of doing live videos and stuff like that is I don't do them all the time. And then when I do, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. so anyways. You're getting to see my true personality here. So <laughs> hope you're enjoying this live. Anyways, so now let's hop into how to set boundaries and setting those healthy boundaries and how important they are. So I cannot, seriously cannot stress enough how important it is to have boundaries set in your business and really in all areas of life. But specifically, if you're an entrepreneur and you don't have boundaries set at this moment, 
you need to definitely take a minute and really think about how to section off, you know, different areas and really set those boundaries for yourself. So it is so easy for us to be on our phones or our laptops continually connected to social media and our clients, right? Because we are always having these things directly in our vicinity, right? My phone's right here, my computer, my laptop, they're all here. And it's just so easy for us to be connected. But I'm sure that is not why you started your business in the first place, right? Like you probably started your entrepreneur business. You wanted to become an entrepreneur because of all the freedom that it gives you, right? Not the restraints basically that you're putting on yourself without putting these boundaries in place. So for me, when I think about all the limitations of a nine to five job versus running my own business, you know, there's things like I don't want to cap out at a certain pay grade, right? I don't want to be denied a last minute vacation that I just plan on a whim just because why not? Let's go on a vacation. Um, and most of all for myself, I have kids. So if I was working a full time job, um, and my kids are sick, all of a sudden, I wouldn't want to have to pull, you know, from vacation time, possibly if they don't have a sick time policy, um, things like that, that I just don't want to have to think about, right? Like if my kids are sick, and they need me, I'm home, and I can take time off. That's, that's fine. I can flex my schedule, because I'm in control of everything, right? It's my business. It's your business. You are in total control of all of that. So I just think it's amazing to be able to run your own business from home, especially while having kids and just the freedom that it offers in the in the scheduling aspect of everything too. So in order to have freedom though, in regards to time when running your own business, you really need to reflect on how your schedule, or sorry, on your schedule to see how much you can actually be working, okay? So a lot of new business owners, myself included, definitely guilty of this. Um, we tend to feel like we have to say yes to pretty much everything, right? And we take on everything that we can in the beginning, right? Because it's all so exciting. And, you know, we don't want to turn pay paying clients away, right? Because it's our first or second or third client. And it's all so exciting. But then you find out, you know, that they're this crazy overbearing client and it's just way too much <laughs> and there's no boundaries set, right? Um, so yeah, that is just not the way it's supposed to be. So you need to set boundaries and start being okay with saying no, because that's okay. It is totally fine to say no. And if you don't say no and start to stick up for that boundary, right, you will burn out. And that is not fun. I was on the verge of burnout. Sorry. Um, got a call there. Hopefully I don't have to cancel this. But anyways, I'm going to try and get through the rest uh, before they try and call back. Um, so then you will be forced to take time from other areas. If you do burn out from working too much, you're going to be forced to take time from other areas of your life to try and recoup yourself and come back strong in your business. So... But think about it, right? Like, what if you never got anywhere near that point of burnout because you already have the schedules and boundaries set to prevent all of that, right? Sounds pretty good, right? So uh, by now, you're probably thinking, okay, like, come on, just get on with it, right? How do I set these boundaries and what, what boundaries should I be setting? So we just talked about your routine and daily schedule. So now you roughly know or should know how much time it takes you to do certain tasks and you should now be more aware of the openings within your schedule as well. So here's a quick example for all of the stay-at-home mompreneurs out there that are like me, uh, running a business with little kids, you know, around in the house that are needing our attention full-time too. Um, so at max, you can probably devote say 10 to 15 hours per week to client work along with working on your own business. Obviously, this is going to be different for everyone, but that's just an example, okay? So also, I cannot stress this enough. If you have 15 hours available in your schedule, 
do not schedule 15 hours of client work per week. Okay, why? You might you might be asking why? Because when will you ever find time to work on your own business and grow your own business, grow your own leads, right? Grow that audience if you are allowing all of your work time to your clients, okay? So just remember that if a client of yours all of a sudden cancels services with you, you want to make sure that you have a warm audience of leads that are ready at any time. So if you have 15 hours of availability and, you know, you're looking to book clients, I would literally say book 10 hours of client work and leave the five hours a week for your own business to work on everything that you have to do in your business that week and just get a feel for it. Maybe it doesn't have to be five, but I definitely recommend keeping a few hours of time for yourself out of your schedule that you can really focus on your own business as well. Focus on that growth. So next would be where to set boundaries. Okay, so family time, you time, right? Self-care, client work. So let's dig into this one a little bit further because this is where it gets um, a little bit interesting, especially for new entrepreneurs that are like, well, I don't know, I'm just going to respond at any time or do this and that, right? So this is where you really need to look at things. So what times during the day will you be available for client work, right? Setting that out there. If you're not working, you know, full open hours, how many hours a day are you going to be working? Um, and sorry, yeah, so what times of the day and then how many hours are you working for clients in a day and then in a week? Um, next would be looking at how many hours you will work on your own business per day or per week. So social media content planning, you know, curating content, client engagement, nurturing leads, all the things, right? Um, next would be thinking about when your clients contact you, right? So your clients can probably contact you 24 seven, but when can they expect a response from you? Right. So if they contact you, for example, on a Saturday, will you respond to them on a Saturday or can they expect to hear from you on Monday or your next working business day? Or if they contact you at 6 p.m. at night, are you going to respond at 6 p.m. or will you leave it until your next working day in the morning? Right. So just little things like that. So another thing would be how you communicate with your clients on what what type of platforms, right? So I highly recommend Voxer. That's like a walkie talkie app. You can talk um, voice notes back and forth to each other, text videos, you know, short videos and images and stuff like that. You can send all through Voxer. So I use Voxer Zoom for video calls, obviously, like client check ins and stuff. And then Trello is a great you know, simple project management type of thing if you're looking for a free option or um, Asana is good too. So the odd email, obviously, if it's lengthy, but I don't recommend giving your phone number for texting or calling to a client. And the reason for this is because some clients will take full advantage of this because they know that that's your personal phone number and they are going to blow up your phone 24-7. And that's just not okay. That is not okay on either, you know, on their side thinking that they can do that. And then it's so hard for you to say like, whoa, 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 like, wait, don't send me messages all the time. <laughs> right. So it is so important to implement these healthy boundaries at the beginning of your business relationships with your clients. So if you let a client control and dictate your schedule, basically treating you like an employee, which you're not, you're an entrepreneur, you are a contractor working with them, not for them. Um, they are going to expect you to continue that going forward, right? And it's going to be a lot harder for you to reel those reins back once you've let them cross that line. It's possible. It's definitely possible to do, but it's a lot harder to do that. So remember Again, you own your business, okay? You are working with your clients as a contractor, like I said, not an employee. So make sure you set and communicate your boundaries. All right, so now the secret that every working mom 
especially wants to know is how to keep a healthy balance between work and mom life, especially when they're all happening under one roof, right? So I have struggled with this. It is hard. You know, we kind of go in phases as the entrepreneurial journey is, you know, and it's the same with this. It kind of comes and goes. It's like, oh, things are amazing. And then it's like, ah, the world's falling apart. <laughs> like, this is happening. This is happening. This is happening. Um, So being a stay-at-home mom while running a business out of your home is not all rainbows and butterflies as some people may portray it to be. It is tough. And if you don't have the proper boundaries and schedules and support, it is going to make it a lot harder for you. But hear me out when I say this, like I am here for you. I know what it's like. I've been there. I've been new to this online space and didn't know what the heck I was doing. So if you're there, um, definitely reach out to me. Okay. My husband, again, he supports me a hundred percent in my business and everything that I'm doing, but he is not a business owner himself, right? He's not an entrepreneur. So he doesn't have that same mindset that I do towards my business. Okay. So I highly recommend connecting with other amazing women who are in this online community. You are all going through this at different stages, but you all have the same understanding and you have someone that knows the struggles of it all, right? And it is just invaluable to get through the low times that you're going to need support, right? And also have those people there supporting you with your wins as well. All right, so just a quick recap from today on everything that we covered for the three secrets to a healthy work-life balance. You now know how to set goals and boundaries and how to properly execute those through a time management system called time blocking. Okay, so now for everyone that is either catching the live or the replay, I wanted to extend an invite to join the waitlist for my online course, Virtual Assistant Startup Academy. The enrollment for this, this next round here will be opening on September 14th. And this course walks you through everything that you need to know in order to create and launch an online virtual assistant business in just four weeks. So I created this online course to give you the exact blueprint that I used to go from stressed out, not making any money as a virtual assistant to fully being booked out in my client uh, with client work, uh, making $3,000 plus a month, working less than 20 hours a week, you guys, with twin girls at home, okay? So completely confident in myself and my business, all while, like I said, being home with my, with my twin girls. So Virtual Assistant Startup Academy is a self-paced 100% online course, and it is a step-by-step -step guide blueprint that is guiding you from intimidated and unsure, you know, about really how to start and how to go through that beginning phase of getting your business off the ground, creating, you know, what services to offer, things like that to building a sustainable online business that works with your life turning your experience, your skills, your passions into an online business that gives you the freedom to work from home or wherever you want to work from, right? Wherever life takes you. And you are going to be confident in the next steps that you're going to be making in your business. This is a comprehensive course. Pardon me. You will never have to buy another product or course in order to get your business up and running. It is literally all in one place. So someone who has been in your shoes, like I said, I understand the struggles and I know how to help you get past those hurdles and challenges. When you join the Academy, you also get a lot of expert support. So I'm in there coaching you. I also have a lady that coaches you um, for copywriting. I have another lady that is doing some tech support um, as far as getting your emails set up and things like that. And then I also have a coach for mindset, which is so important when starting and growing, obviously, in your business. But you get to learn from four experts within the academy. 
And then, um, of course, all of the foundations from choosing your services, pricing your offers, and making sales, and so much more in the course. So I'll be adding a link uh, below this video in the description. And if this course sounds like something that you have been looking for, go ahead and join the waitlist. Um, and just so you know, I wanted to mention this too. So this waitlist is totally no strings attached. Um, it simply just shows me that you are interested in learning more. And I will, you know, consider you then as a VIP insider info. Um, blah, 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 sorry. I will consider you as a VIP insider and you will receive access um, to joining this round of the course. So again, enrollment will be open on September 14th for a limited time. And that wraps up everything for today. So I'm right on my time today. So that's great. Um, I hope you found this super helpful. If you have any questions about anything that I share today, um, regarding the training or the academy, definitely send me a message on here or you can email me info at bizcoachgen.com. All right. Thanks again for taking the time to join me and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.